everyone, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and guess what? I got another miniature console. This was sent to me by my friend Megabit, and this is his Megabit Nintendo case. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. So the case itself is pretty small. I'm going to go ahead and grab an original Nintendo to show you the size difference. So this case is inspired by the Daft Mike case that came out about a year ago. He's the first one to come up with one of these mini Nintendos that read NFC cartridges. But this is not the same exact product. There's been updates to the software, the hardware, and the case. And the software is probably one of the biggest changes. Instead of taking about an hour to get everything up and going, it only takes about five minutes to get the Megabit Nest Pi software installed. So I've got all kinds of miniature consoles, but this is definitely one of my favorite. Just the way these little cartridges load, it's just so cool. I'm having an 8-bit flashback. No pun intended. And as you can see here, there's a giant difference in the two sizes of cartridges. So this is a 3D printed case, but the quality is pretty good. You got functional power buttons and USB ports on the front there. You got Ethernet port on the side. You got your HDMI port and power ports on the back. And you got memory card access here on the side. And the case itself is very solid. It doesn't feel cheap at all when you're holding it. And here's one of my favorite things about the case is the game actually clicks down in place just like the original Nintendo. That is so cool. Let's do it one more time. That is so satisfying when it clicks down in place. So these cartridges are also 3D printed, and they have an NFC tag that's inside them. So I'll grab another cartridge to show you. So on this cartridge, I just have that NFC tag stuck just to the back of the cartridge. So as you can see, these tags are very thin and compact, so they fit inside these cartridges well. So what these NFC tags do is they store a small amount of information that can be transmitted wirelessly. Right to our Raspberry Pi 3. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. And the case just snaps apart. It's really handy. There's no screws involved. You just unsnap it. So this is powered by a Raspberry Pi 3 and a Megabit NFC electronic kit. On the lid side here is the NFC reader. I'll turn around here so we can take a closer look. And this is how the cartridges are able to communicate with the Raspberry Pi 3. So the way the software is programmed is when you insert a cartridge in the cartridge slot and you push the reset or cycle the power button, it sends a signal to your Raspberry Pi 3 and tells it to open up whatever game is programmed on your cartridge. Also on the lid is a fan to keep that Raspberry Pi nice and cool and this just snaps right into place. There's no screws necessary. And this Megabit circuit board right here is what supplies power and communication to your fan, your NFC reader, and your power buttons. And I will be releasing at least three different videos about this Megabit Nintendo. The second video is going to be assembling the case and all your electronics, and then the third video is going to be all about the software. Also inside the case is a USB extender. And what this does is it plugs into two of the USB ports on your Raspberry Pi board and then extends them to the front. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put the case back together. And once again, that just snaps together and it's really slick how it works. So for controllers, you can use this USB Nintendo controller like this, or any USB controller that's compatible with Raspberry Pi 3. Or, this is my favorite, this is a Bluetooth controller, this is a Wii U Pro controller, and this works perfect on the Raspberry Pi 3. And this is my controller of choice because it works with 3D games also. And to get this product and more products, you can head over to megabitnes.com and he's got quite a bit of products. You can get the Megabit Ultimate NES package. It's got everything. It's got the Raspberry Pi 3, memory cards, the electronic kit in the case. Or you can just purchase the Megabit NES case without the electronics. You can also get Super Nintendo cases. Uh, you can get PlayStation 1 cases, Nintendo 64 cases, Super Famicom cases. He's got all kinds of stuff in stock. You should check it out. So everyone, for this project, I've compiled a RetroPy image that contains all the software, even the Megabit software, so it's ready to go. All you gotta do is install one image, and you're up and running. And I'll release this image along with the software video in video number three. Now this is optional, you don't have to use this image, you can use your own RetroPy image, and I'll show you how to install the software on that too. So this is a modified Super Nintendo theme for the emulation station that was made by Ruckage. So I just modified this theme so it's more suitable for the Nintendo Entertainment System. So on my image, I have a folder that contains all the original Nintendo games. Then I also have a folder for just the Nintendo Classic games. There's 30 of those. And all those have screenshots and video previews. So this is all the same exact games that was released on the Nintendo Classic Edition. And I also have a folder for Super Nintendo that contains all the original Super Nintendo games, plus a few extra. And of course, we can't forget about the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. So inside here, we have all 21 games that was released with that console. Okay, it's game time. Let's go ahead and load a game. This is Legend of Zelda. Let's go ahead and put it in the console. And to load the game, all we need to do is push reset or you can cycle the power button. So I'm just going to push reset. Now the game should automatically load. 
Now if you have your save game states turned on, it's going to bring you right back to the point where you were playing last. So I'm right where I left off. So there's three different ways you can load the games. You can push the reset button, you can cycle the power button off and back on, or you can start with the console off, with the game inserted, power it on, and your game will load right up. And you can change the game at any point. Just load up your new game, push the reset button, and your game will pop right up. So I'm not limited to just playing games that are on cartridges. I have thousands of games I can pick from, so obviously I'm not going to have a thousand cartridges. So what I did is I just put some of my favorite games on these NFC cartridges, then the rest I can just play through Emulation Station. For me, it's not about being practical. It's about bringing back a nostalgic feeling and memories that you just can't get without having these little cartridges. So is anyone else out there Batman fans, or is it just me? I thought this game was awesome. Now I'm going to show you how to write to one of these cartridges. This is Dragon Warrior, and it's blank. There's nothing on it. And if you like Zelda, you definitely should try Dragon Warrior out. This is a very good game. So I've opened up my Nintendo folder, and I'm going to scroll down to Dragon Warrior 1. And open up the game. Then as soon as the game loads, all you have to do is hold the reset button for about 3 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and hold it here. After holding for three seconds, the LED will blink three times, and that'll indicate that it just wrote to the cartridge. You can also use the same feature to overwrite a tag if needed. And if you have an NFC compatible phone, you can use that to write to your tags or read them. Let's go ahead and read that tag we just wrote to verify what's on it. So I'm just going to swipe this game on the back of my phone to read it, and then scroll to the bottom, and I got two text records. One that says NES, that indicates which system, and another record that says the exact name of the game. So if you're going to write to an NFC tag using your phone, this is the same exact format you want to use. You want to make one record that contains the system name, and the second record that contains the game file name. And I'm going to explain this a lot better in my software video that I'll be releasing here soon. You can also load games from other systems like Super Nintendo. If you want to load Super Mario All-Stars for the Super Nintendo, you can do that. You can even use it to load homebrew games like this. This is Wario's Adventure and it's a remake of Super Mario World, but it's got completely different levels, music, and more. And this game's actually done really well. I like it. So pretty much any game that you can load through Emulation Station will also load through the NFC. I've tested all kinds of systems, and it worked really well. Okay everyone, thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please click that like button, and if you want to hear more from me, subscribe. And if you want to see more of my videos, just click any of these links.